Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. So today I have something very different for you in that I'm doing a tips video and I've never done that before. So this is my very first tips video and it's even more different because I am actually getting the helping hand from a fellow motion graphics enthusiast. His uh, YouTube channel is very good. He covers a lot of Redshift tutorials and his name is Bold and Break. So be sure to check him out. I'm putting the link to his channel in the description below. I'm going to be doing the first five tips and he's going to be jumping in with the next five. So you could call that lazy in that I'm only doing half of the work, but I call it a collaboration. So let's get started on this. Here we go. Okay, guys, so this is a really simple one, um, but um, some of you might not know about it. Um, if we want to select all of the children so we want to select the parent and all of the children really quick and easy way of doing that is using the middle mouse click middle mouse click on the parent and if i just go to unfold all here you'll see that all of the children have been selected as well so the next one is really simple again um, but extremely useful and I'll just show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to clone this guy um, and I'm going to create a cloner and I want the geometry to be put in as a child of the cloner. That's the way you clone stuff. A way to automatically do that is to first of all select the object that you want to clone, hold down alt and click on the cloner object icon. Now that automatically added the geometry of our guy to the cloner as a child, which is really handy. If I just undo that, the other thing you might want to do is you might want to automatically add an object as a child of the selected object in your hierarchy. And to do that, you simply just hold shift. So usually when you're adding something to be a child of something, it's usually gonna be a deformer. So if I just hold down shift, making sure that the object that I want to deform is selected hold down shift and we can just add in a bed deformer a bend deformer and that will automatically be added as a child of the selected object so let's say you have a cube and you pop it into a subdivision surface object and you can use the tip from before hold down alt it'll do that automatically for you before you click on it making sure you had the cube selected beforehand and let's say you didn't want this part of the uh, cube well, it's now a sphere, but let's say you wanted this part of the cube to be more of a sharper edge. Now, what you could do is add some cut lines along here and along here. But another way you can do it is by using the subdivision surface weight tag, which is under modeling tags, and then you could add it here. Then you'd have to go and find your subdivision uh, weight subdivision surface tool, and then you would be able to edit that edge but a much quicker way of doing that, it'll automatically add the tag for you. You don't have to go digging for the tool. All you have to do is, the handy shortcut for this is, well, first of all, this has to be editable. Um, and then we can go and select the edge that we want to um, edit. Now, the shortcut here is by just simply holding down the full stop button on your keyboard or the period button on your keyboard. So if I do that, click and drag, now you can see I was able to automatically add that SDS weight tag and I didn't have to go looking for my subdivision, my weight subdivision surface tool to edit that edge. Now, I don't know about a lot of you, but for me, adding sound to a Cinema 4D file had always been a bit of a mystery. That is, of course, until I figured out how to do it. Um, so I'm going to include this as a tip. Now, Cinema 4D have added a sound on, sound off button uh, to their interface. So I might not even be doing it the correct way anymore. Um, so if, I, if you guys know of a quicker way to do that, please let me know. But this is uh, going to be one of my tips. So what I would do and what I still do is I create a null object and I go and I add a keyframe on any of these parameters, doesn't matter which one, just so it'll show up in the timeline. Then I open up the timeline and I can find my null object here with my keyframe. Then it's simply a case of going to create, add special tracks, 
and sound. Once you have that done, you're able to pop over here to the sound, click on this button, it'll bring up Windows Explorer for you, and in there you'll be able to add in your audio. So for this tip, I want to talk about the Reset Transform tool. If I just click on the sphere, and if I click on this Reset Transform, which I might add used to be called Reset PSR. So if, using, if you are using an older version of Cinema, this could be called Reset PSR. They have changed it to Reset Transform and have also added it into the uh, top icon panel in the startup layout. If I click on that, it just resets the coordinates to world center for whatever object is selected. Now, that is one use for it. The main use personally for me is to align objects to other objects. So let's just say I want to align this sphere to this cube. Now I could just grab the sphere and move it over to the cube, but that can be quite difficult in more complicated scenes. Now Reset Transform makes that really easy. So if I select this cube, I know it's this one, I will drag my sphere, make it a child of that cube that I want to align it to, click on the Reset Transform button, and then it will align to the cube. So the first tip is to improve your general and viewport performance of Cinema 4D. Why do you want to do this? Because it takes pressure off the GPU. So if you're using a GPU render like Octane or Redshift, um, maybe that might help with things like crashes. To improve your viewport performance, you want to disable OpenGL. And to do that, go up to Options and just click Effects and that's it. Now, if you're still having trouble with your viewport performance, if you want to try another method to improve your general performance of Cinema 4D, you can close Cinema 4D. And while opening Cinema 4D, hold Control and Shift while it's opening. A prompt will pop up saying Shift plus Control, use minimal viewport settings. And that will turn off any post effects in your viewport, improving the performance. Tip number two is using the layer manager. And to give an example of this, let's just create uh, three PBR materials. And let's go to our layers here, create a new layer, call it PBR, and drag these under your PBR. And um, we're going to create three more standard materials. And we're going to create a new layer called STD. There you go. So we have this STD layer, this PBR layer, and we can now select them individually. This is really helpful. Do you ever open a scene in cinema and it has a hundred textures it's a really good way of organizing them and you can do this with pretty much anything in your cinema 4d scene and it's very helpful uh, when trying to stay organized when you have a massive scene full of different objects and materials okay tip number three is to convert the edges of a model to a spline it's well documented that cinema 4d can use splines in creative ways now if you want a wireframe and you want to do something more malleable with that wireframe but you don't want to be using kind of the wireframe mode in an external render or um, the Cinema 4D render. What you can do is uh, have your model selected and go to edge mode. Press Control A, right click and select edge to spline. Take your spline out from being a child of the object. Delete your object and now you have this spline. Tip number four um, is making the camera in Cinema 4D feel a little bit more organic and cinematic. How do we do this? We're going to use the vibrate tag on the camera. Um, we're going to select our camera here and um, we're going to right click, go to animation, uh, select the vibrate tag and in the vibrate tag, uh, enable position and enable rotation. Now you will see that this is kind of all over the place, but we want to change these values uh, to make it feel a little bit more handheld, like it's in a cinematic shot. So change this to one, one, one. 
change the rotation maybe to three to five frequency to one let's see what that looks like and that's a little bit wobbly maybe too much go to point change the frequency of the rotation maybe to point two and change the frequency of the position to point five and you can see there we're getting this kind of wobbly handheld feeling to it and you can even take off the rotation maybe bring the z up to five to one and you, you're getting some jotter and just a position and you can start to see this really come out put up the ten to really show it working and you can see this wobbly effect kind of taking place this handheld footage like effect because in the real world you still get like a tad bit of camera shake so even if it's not fully noticeable our brain will take it in and you can really lift your shots by adding just a little bit of movement to your camera in the scene so sticking with the camera this is tip number five let's take off our vibrate tag and we're going to make a dynamic camera and this is a very unusual technique and you probably won't use it that much but it's a fun one so for a bridge let's add a simulation tag and make this a collider body if we add a simulation tag rigid body to our camera nothing will happen because it doesn't recognize the camera as an object so let's just see if anything happens no so how do we get this rigid body tag to work with dynamics in cinema first of all delete that what we're going to do is we're going to make an object that is of roughly the same size as the camera and we're going to make the camera a child of that object so here we have our box I'll press t to scale and just adjust it and just adjust this box to be around the same size as your camera maybe go back to 50 to 50 okay now we want to add a composition tag turn off everything here okay so we're going to just move our camera outside this box ever so slightly so it's not obscuring anything and we're going to make our camera a child of this now for something more realistic it might be better to use a shape that's more like a camera so you get the bounce and feel but just for the sake of showing how this works we're going to add a rigid body tag here now let's go back in our render view bring this down so it's not too dramatic and let's drop to the floor and there you get kind of a bounce quite cool uh let's start again let's actually do something more dramatic let's rotate this and you get that kind of that falling effect of the camera and that's quite cool you know and if you were to if we were here and we just you know filleted our edges we probably get a better roll yeah you get a little of a bounce there so that's why it's sometimes better to um to make the corners and stuff just a little bit um smoother and maybe get a realistic a more realistic shape to make the camera a child of but this is quite cool i hope you enjoyed those five tips i'd like to thank jb motion for getting me involved in this um really enjoyed it um, hopefully we'll do another collaboration soon at some stage check out my channel it's bold and break and on that channel i discuss kind of industry talk as well as doing technical tutorials um, i myself mainly focus on redshift but there's a few octane tutorials up there also um, thank you and goodbye